You're watching WBOC. Between the ocean and the Chesapeake, we're Delmarva's News Leader. Coming up on WBOC News This Morning. Salisbury Scooters, what the mayor and others are saying about electric bird scooters. Players Parade, what type of welcome was received by the Little League softball team from Del Mar. And Homes for the Homeless, where volunteers are coming together to build a tiny home shelter village. Covering all of Del Marva, this is WBOC News This Morning, Del Marva's news leader. From the WBOC Newsplex in Salisbury, how about we get your morning started with news from all over Del Marva? Good morning. You're watching WBOC News This Morning. I'm Jimmy Hoppe. And good morning. I'm Tamika Keenan Norman. Thanks for joining us on TV, the WBOC News app, or our Facebook page. It is Wednesday, August 17th. And meteorologist Sean Conway is in for Mike Lichniak this morning. Good, yes. morning, good, good morning, Jimmy. Good morning, Tamika. Good morning. Good to see you. You know, we had pleasant, sunny weather yesterday. Mm -hmm. Can we expect the same today? Yes, we can. We're going to mm -hmm. continue the stretch of really nice weather. Let's take a look outside at those temperatures. It is odd. Uh, Seasonably mild, 64 right now in Salisbury, 61 Seaford in Dover, 70 in Lewis, 68 in Rehoboth Beach. On the satellite and radar, it's going to be a sunny start to the day. We don't have any clouds anywhere to be seen. And here's your forecast breakdown for your Wednesday. Mostly sunny skies, temperatures climbing through the upper 70s at lunchtime on their way into the low 80s. Clouds will be on the increase toward the afternoon. That's ahead of a round of maybe some showers or thunder. We'll talk more about that in just about five minutes. At 503 this morning, as the school year starts around the nation, districts are already facing an uphill battle, a shortage of teachers. As Naomi Ruckham explains this morning, tens of thousands of positions are still unfilled. Covering all of Del Marva, this is WBOC News This Morning. Del Marva's news leader. Well, good morning. Thanks for joining WBOC News this morning. I'm Jimmy Hoppe. In your news this morning, it was a hero's welcome home for the Little League softball team from Del Mar. The community welcomed the girls back Tuesday afternoon with a very special escort. The team represented Maryland in the Mid Atlantic region in the Little League Softball World Series in North Carolina. Del Mar went undefeated all season, all the way through to the World Series championship game, where they lost Monday to the Southwest region, represented by Texas. Plenty uh, of people on hand during a parade that brought the girls into town for a celebration of their incredible success. Uh, as for the players, well, Emma Tooley says they came back with life lessons and plenty of memories. Good sportsmanship. You have to have that good sportsmanship. For as a team, you need to stick together and everything. So you have to have, like be nice to each other, have a good bond with everyone, so uh, you can stick together as a team. Despite the loss, one of the Del Mar girls says so she's already got her eyes set on winning next year. Volunteers in Georgetown came together Tuesday, working towards building tiny homes for the homeless. Volunteers from Dogfish Head Brewery and the Springboard Collaborative cleaned up a vacant lot which will be used to house homeless people in a tiny home shelter village. Dogfish Head co-founder Mariah Calagione says the homes contain air conditioning, heat, beds, there's a communal bathroom nearby. Between social services, transportation, the, the land um, and the need, um, it, you know, has come together with a lot of, of course, behind the scenes, hard volunteer work. Um, I'm excited to see it, you know, rise up. Village of Georgetown expected to rise up in October, just in time to get people housed before the winter. So do we get to see sunshine today? Meteorologist John Conway has a look at your forecast in a moment. Well, a good Wednesday morning to you. We're going to see another day of pleasant temperatures across Delmarva. North of Route 50 in Denton, Vienna, Seaford going to be rising into the upper 70s, low 80s in Salisbury. Temperatures, though, are going to be a little closer to the mid 70s out on the beaches. The winds are going to be a little gusty, and that's why we do have a high threat of rip currents on the beaches of Delaware and Maryland. So if you're not a particularly strong swimmer, you may want to consider staying up on the beach. That UV index, though, is going to be a high level 8. So mostly sunny for the rest of the day, but this evening a weak disturbance may bring us a low chance of a stray shower or a rumble of thunder. Not expecting a washout, though, for the evening hours. In the seven-day forecast, though, we're going to start returning the humidity tomorrow into Friday. Temperatures mid-80s, although rain chances hold off until the weekend. Low chances of some rumbles of thunder Saturday and Sunday. Better chances early next. 
Covering all of Delmarva, this is WBOC News at Noon, Delmarva's news leader. And good afternoon, everybody. Welcome here to WBOC News at Noon. I'm Steve Hammond, a federal judge ordering Rudy Giuliani to appear before a special grand jury that's investigating election fraud and interference in the 2020 presidential election. Natalie Brand has more. Covering all of Delmarva, this is WBOC News at 4, Delmarva's news leader. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us today. I'm Jacqueline Carley. And I'm Todd Carley. The weekend is almost here and so far it's looking like our weather is going to hold up for the most part. And we'll check in with meteorologist Dan Satterfield for more on that in just a couple of minutes. But first here are four stories you don't want to miss today out for. The fighting crime on the eastern shore. Governor Hogan announces plans to expand a crime fighting network targeting everything from gang crime to human trafficking. And First Lady Yumi Hogan also came to Worcester County today with a different mission in mind. We spoke with Mrs. Hogan about what keeps her coming back year after year. The federal government's response to monkeypox. The CDC director outlines what the plan of attack is going into the fall. And COVID consequences. New research finds people who have had COVID-19 have a higher risk of developing neurological and psychiatric conditions. How long the increased risk lasts. All these stories and more today on WBOC News at 4. An invasive insect has made its way to Maryland, which means eastern shore growers are on high alert. WBOC's Lauren Miller joins us now from Vienna up in Dorchester County. And Lauren, the spotted lanternfly can wreak havoc if it's not taken care of. Todd, we're here at Layton's Chance Vineyard in Vienna, Maryland, and spotted lanternflies, they love grapes like these. Now, fortunately, the owner does tell us they haven't spotted any spotted lanternflies, and here is the story. Tonight on WBOC News at 5 on Fox 21. A federal judge may rule as soon as today whether to unseal the affidavit the FBI used to justify searching former President Trump's Florida home. Also, inflation, new spending, student loans all being argued in Washington and certain to be election issues. Join us today at 5. So fun, so fresh, so everything you want to watch. So Fox 21. Tonight on WBOC News at 5 on Fox 21. Inflation, student loan debt, mortgage rates, all sides agree the economy is the number one issue for midterm voters this fall. A judge hears the case over whether or not to keep the affidavit which led to the FBI's raid at Mar-a-Lago sealed. I'm Lauren Blanchard in Washington. What we learn from court coming up. Covering all of Del Marvel. This is WBOC News at 5 on Fox 21, Delmarva's news leader. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm Steve Hammond. And I'm Jacqueline Carley. New reaction to a federal judge's decision to partially unseal the affidavit connected to the FBI raid of Mar-a-Lago last week. The Florida judge acknowledged the Department of Justice's argument that it contained sensitive information about sources, but also said the intense public interest warrants some release. Fox's Lauren Blanchard has a closer look now from Washington. We're hanging out with a field hockey phenom today. It's showtime. <laughs> You're going to meet her a little later on in the show, and she has quite a story. Do not want to miss that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't ever want you to miss it, but that's... Yeah, just just take my word for it. Uh, 17 years old, um, an <coughs> athlete, and had a stroke. Wow. That's all I'm going to say. You need to see the story. Oh, my goodness. How are you today? I'm good. How are you today? Good. Good. I am enjoying this fake fall weather. Uh, yeah, I mean, even 79, 80, 81 degrees right? is okay when you don't have 99.9% .9 humidity. I think they're saying they're going to change that for us, though, so we can 
sweat more for the weekend i hope yeah well yes yeah because yes. that's that's when you go to the beach that's when you're supposed to sweat <laughs> schedule your sweat and speaking of the beach the town of ocean city is honoring their former tourism director who sadly passed away in 2020 this bench and a garden were dedicated earlier this week to donna abbott abbott was <laughs> hired by the town in 1997 and spent more than 20 years working for the resort town WBOC News at 6. Work stoppage. Football season is almost here, but high school referees in Delaware may not be on the field. Email controversy. Why a candidate in Wicomico County is facing scrutiny over a campaign email. Ordinance outrage. I'm Rachel Pearson. Old Del Mar Law sparking new debate over basketball nets. Covering all of Delmarva, this is WBOC News at 6, winner of the Emmy for Evening Newscast. Good Wednesday evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us here tonight at 6 o'clock. I'm Steve Hammond. The high school football season just around the corner. However, there's a work stoppage involving the officials for those games in Delaware. And that could have a big impact on this year's football season if there's no resolution. DSN's Corey Nido joins us in the Newsplex with more. So, Corey, what's the latest today on all this? Steve, the Delmarva Football Officials Association and the Delaware Interscholastic Athletic Association are not in agreement on multiple topics from pay to negotiating in good faith. The Delaware State Fire Marshal's office has got a new canine. We'll tell you what it does, plus a special day for surfing in Ocean City. We'll see you tonight at 7. Tonight on WBOC News at 7. Fire safety. I'm Christina DiRobertis introducing you to the Delaware State Fire Marshal's newest canine. Uh, plus, possible delay of game. Why football referees in Delaware might not be on the field for the start of the season. What one coach has to say about it. A little warmer weather as we head toward the end of the week and perhaps some wet weather on the weekend. I'll tell you more in a few. Covering all of Delmarva, this is WVOC News at 7, Delmarva's news leader. And good evening, I'm Chris Weimer. And I'm Todd Carley. Thanks for being here tonight with high school football right around the corner. Referees could be stopping the clock before it starts. The Delmarva Football Officials Association and the DIAA have not made an agreement on several terms, including pay. This has led the DFOA to declare a work stoppage, which could potentially stop any types of games to be played. Without an agreement, officials from the DFOA will not be on the field for scrimmages or regular season games from the varsity level down to middle school games. The association has come up with a new proposal they are hoping will get agreed upon. We did reach out to the DIAA for comment, but have not yet heard back. Outdoors Delmarva covers everything outdoors, including real hunting and fishing situations involving wildlife. We do our best each and every week to keep it tasteful, but discretion is advised. Now enjoy the show. This is Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. This week on the show, when there are more than 400 boats in Ocean City, all fishing for a chance at taking home some of the eight and a half million dollars in prize money, it must be time for the White Marlin Open. It's the 49th year of the storied tournament, and we hit the ocean to see if there are any fish worthy of the prize. Yeah, the 290 something boats, so very, very slow. And back on land, there's plenty of action at the scales. With lead changes throughout the week, you never know what's coming next. Plus, the sights and sounds that make the White Marlin Open a one-of-a-kind event. Right now on Outdoors Del Marva. It's a bulldog fight. That's why we come out here. This is Outdoors Del Marva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. And now here's Andrew Taws and Chopper Chuck Regner. Thanks for watching Outdoors Delmarva. I'm Andrew Taws. And I'm Chopper Chuck Regner. Well, Andrew, 
This week, all eyes are on Ocean City, Maryland for the 49th annual White Marlin Open. Yes, they are, Chuck, and with a single billfish potentially being worth more than half of that $8.6 million in prize money, well, that's why it's known as the largest and richest billfish tournament in the world. Anglers and crew members begin making their way down the docks in Sunset Marina as last-minute preps are made for the first day of fishing. Coming up tonight on WBOC News at 10 on Fox 21. A judge plans to make public at least part of the affidavit supporting the search warrant for former President Donald Trump's estate in Florida. And still loading when Maryland could see online gambling up and running. We'll see you tonight at 10. Tonight on WBOC News at 10 on Fox 21. A judge plans to make public at least part of the affidavit supporting the search warrant for former President Donald Trump's estate in Florida. And still loading when Maryland could see online gambling up and running. The governor weighing in today as well. It's going to be a bit warmer tomorrow across Delmarva. The weekend, kind of a mixed bag. I'll tell you more in a little while. Covering all of Delmarva, this is WBOC News at 10 on Fox 21. And good evening, I'm Chris Weimer. A Florida judge says he is inclined to release some of the affidavit outlining why the August 8th raid at former President Trump's home was necessary. He is, however, giving the Justice Department the chance to make some redactions. Lauren Blanchard is in Washington with more on why we may only ever see pages of black. Former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani in a Georgia court today. Plus, we'll tell you why there's an issue with refereeing for high school football in Delaware. We'll see you at 11. Tonight on WBOC News at 11. Giuliani in Georgia. Former President Trump's personal attorney testifying before a Georgia grand jury today investigating attempts to overturn the 2020 election. Campaign controversy why one Wicomico County candidate is facing some backlash over a campaign email. And drought continues in the West, forcing the feds to cut the water supply to states along the Colorado River. One official says ignoring the problem is no longer an option. Covering all of Delmarva, this is WBOC News at 11, Delmarva's news leader. Good evening, I'm Chris Weimer. Welcome to WBOC News at 11. Former Trump attorney Rudy Giuliani appearing before a special grand jury in Georgia investigating attempts to overturn the 2020 presidential election. Natalie Brand has more details from Washington, D.C.